Hello YouTubers, welcome to Tamiya Truck Building and part 3 of Fancy a Beer. In this episode I will be looking at lighting the last area of connections to the beer SFR1. LED lighting, just in case you don't know, LED stands for light emitting diode. These little components are rather special in that they can give off a large amount of light for minimal current draw. Typically they work at around 2 volts DC or polarised so you must make sure you connect them the right way around and it's advisable to use coloured cables to ensure you connect the other end correctly. The outputs we are going to use on the SFR1 are at battery voltage. I'm using a 7.2 volt NIMH battery. So clearly we need to reduce the voltage using an inline resistor or they'll just go pop. With the MFC Tamiya have built in voltage control so their LEDs don't have a resistor in line. So what do we need? Well, to fit lighting we need the following. Wire, obviously, twin cable, or two individuals for that matter, clearly marked to establish polarity. A resistor to regulate the voltage. And of course an LED. And heat shrink for connections if you need them. As you'll most likely be aware there are two main sizes used on Tamiya models 3mm and 5mm and three colours red, amber or yellow and white. There are also miniature LEDs called SMDs which means surface mount device. These specialist LEDs usually come pre-wired thankfully because they're incredibly small. You just need to add a resistor to use them. I've used them in very small spaces where you want illumination such as the side markers on the tow truck. So how many of each do I need? Well the best thing to do is look in the Tamiya build manual for TROP11 which is usually a section at the back and identify the individual LEDs that you need. If you open a MFC01 or MFC03 manual and find the cable tags chart, which is page 5 in the MFC03 manual, you can look up your LED and it will tell you the colour and size. You could, of course, look at the specific plastic mounting part to gauge the size. We now know the size and colour, but what resistor physical value do I need? Clearly that depends on whether you intend to build your own or buy pre-wired. What's ready made, that's a wire, resistor and a lead together, are so much easier to work with. Be careful that you buy ones that are set for your voltage. For example, you can get pre-wired set to 12 volt, mainly for use on model railways. The resistor in these would be larger than you require and as such they would work but wouldn't be very bright the voltage has been reduced too much. I have found that 9 volt ready made are close enough to use with a 7.2 volt supply. Bear in mind also that ready made set for 6 volt have slightly insufficient voltage reduction and will glow brightly and perhaps not last long. On the subject of longevity, it's always best to underrate your LEDs for long life use. Basically, extra bright equals short life. At this point, you may be wondering how do I calculate the resistor value? Well, there is a simple formula for this, and the easiest way is to use an online calculator. Here's a couple of resources for you to have a look at, but there are many more on the internet.
If you can't purchase the exact value you want, get the next higher value. Don't go the other way. Remember if you over voltage, the lead may go pop or at least may not last as long as it should do. Resistors come in various physical sizes as well as values. A resistor by its very nature has the job of reducing the voltage. It can't just disappear so the reduction is by heat dissipation. If we use Ohm's law we can calculate the amount of power through an LED. I'm going to spare you a formula and just say that LEDs draw very little current and therefore the resistor power rating can be equally very small. In other words, buy the smallest physical size you can. If you don't have a pre-wired LED to hand, have a look online. You'll see the resistor used is minute. This is good because we can easily hide the resistor within our model. Last thing on the DIY version, soldering. This is a job that requires tools and practice to get good results. In many cases the work area is small and intricate. If this phases you, I wouldn't recommend building your own. If you plan to have several LEDs on the same output line, for example the near side indicators would be front, side and rear. It is best to treat each LED as a separate circuit, essentially three LEDs in parallel. Wiring in series is not recommended, well not by me anyway. So you now know what you need, whether you intend to build your own LEDs or purchase complete pre-wired types. Knock up a simple list of how many you require of each type so you can order them. The next part is to look at the dreaded wiring diagram. You note you have 16 available connection points across two connectors, whether you are using the AKL8 or the AKL8W. The only difference being, if you remember, is that one of the two connectors uh, you can put a resistor in it. On each connector pins 1 to 8 are negative outputs and pins 9 and 10 are positive common return lines. Using your own diagram, you can screen grab mine if you like, add in your own lines for the various LEDs you are fitting. For example, you could put near side indicators in A1 and off side indicators in A2. It really doesn't matter which output channel you connect them to, as you will be telling Sound Teacher later which is connected to which channel. Give thought to what you wish to achieve. For example, you wouldn't connect all indicators to one output, else the whole lot would flash at the same time. All near side to one output and all off side to another output is the way to go. Conversely, if you have a load of spots, for example, you most likely would want to have them all come on together, in which case you'd connect them all to a single output. There is a limit to how many you can connect to one output, but it relates to the total current draw, which is quite high. In simple terms, given that LEDs draw a minute amount of current, you can connect a dozen LEDs or more to one output without any problem at all. Work down your wiring diagram until you have assigned all of your lights. Make sure you keep this diagram and refer to it regularly when wiring up. You'll also need to refer to it when programming the software. As a tip, some good housekeeping here will save you confusion and anguish later trying to sort out an anomaly. As for fitting the LEDs, consider 1. The length of cable needed to get from your lamp to the SFR1. 2. Make sure you mark up each cable so you can identify it for connection. Having a bunch of unmarked cables is going to give you a real headache. 3. Consider merging cables. Less wires to run along the model. 4. Make sure you have a bit of spare cable at the SFR1 end so you can run it neatly without any tension or tight bends. 5. Make sure you use colour coded wire so you can determine which wire is the positive and the negative. 
and six very important all red plus cables go to connections 9 and 10 all output connections will therefore be black negative wires you could wire solder or connector all of your LEDs to an open loom and connect it to the SFR1 but I do not recommend this by using either the AKL8 or 8W you have a simple method to easily add, remove or change a wire wherever it goes. The AKL8 and 8W units can be connected to either or both of the output connectors X3 and X4. You don't have to use both the X3 and X4. If you've got more than 8 outputs you will use two. If you've got less than 8 outputs you'll only use one. Each output block can handle eight individual circuits. Just make sure you know which blocks is block is which in relation to your wiring diagram to save confusion later. So that's as far as I'm going in this episode, viewers. In the last episode, I'll be going into detail about the programming necessary to make all of your hard work come to life. I hope you have found the information in this episode helpful. Thank you for watching, and until next time, Bye for now.